what happened in that studio is my amp, uh, when we did the show, my amp broke down. So this this time when I actually move on the stage behind Pip, because I've got a scene halfway between heaven and earth. And if you look at it, well, yeah. I, was supposed to do a really, I was supposed to do a really great bass solo, but suddenly realized, oh, I've got no amp. Sound coming up my amp, and my sound was coming out of his monitor. Was that the improvised part after, I think, cauliflower years? Uh, yeah, the a bass part starts on heaven and earth, doesn't it? Off yeah. Heaven. So, yeah, that's it. And so, yeah, no, it actually broke. It, it stopped doing it. And so, I thought, I'm going to, um, you know, get, get sorted, get, go somewhere where I can play and sing. And there's, the, there's his announcement there and the monitor moved like every, they don't thought I got mad everybody thought I got mad because they were realised my hand was broken we were doing the show so you'd have to stop the show and so what would happen was that, that track wouldn't have been in it so I thought oh, fuck this I'm quite good at doing radio shows and TV shows and I've done a lot of them right? and, um, Hatfield and the North Ham <laughs> I did a lot of shows with them uh, you know, with Camel, and a lot of shows with Caravan, and not so many with them. With that, there was you know, a more particular type type of music, which is now included in Prague, I suppose, or not quite really. Mm. So, but it's, <laughs> we were we were progressive rock, you know. <laughs> whatever that is. No, I got asked. I, I got asked to go back. I, I mean, I was asked back both. Caravan and because I was the one that was actually in communication with everybody was going because I was in one where mm. that all those people you know even the people in the canteen came out every time I opened my mouth to sing there'd be a dozen people from the cats <laughs> the canteen would come out and all be bobbing up and down going oh boy I heard um, I heard Pip said the audience was all wrong they had they had it set it up all wrong for the Hatfield reunion. Uh, well, there wasn't the right thing. Well, yes, right. I mean, there's Hells Angels, right? There's about 50 Hells Angels. Two very old people and, uh, you know, a dozen Hatfield fans. I mean, Caravan had 400 fans there, but Hatfield had about 100. And 60 of them were like um, Hells Angels. You know? it's like, and just before the actual... Um, and just before the show started, uh, two rather elderly people, uh, old, old people, were right in this massive sound system, like JBL sound system, massive, uh, for this, this, you know, studio recording, all perfect sound. They were right in front of the speakers. Hmm. Uh, and this guy was just about to do the announcement. So you don't see that on just before he was making the announcement, about maybe two minutes before the announcement, because that's the timing of the show and all the rest of it, and everything's geared, and it's quite, quite a very complicated. TV studios, you rehearse them, you go through the music three times, and it's like a day in the life of you know, work. Anyway, the, the two old people were there just in front of the speakers, and I jumped off stage, right? That was a good night. Told as me drop. So I've got to try and get down and go and say, hey, because they won't listen to you. You've got to get out of the way. You're going to be blasted to bits. I said, it's, it's true. And I got back on stage. Everybody thought I'd been in the band. I thought, oh, God, here he goes again. You've done that. But what? Well, no, you know, so fuck's sake. Anyway, all the hell's going to be down there helping out with that shit. And then the moment we played, all the, haze, all the Hells Angels left off, I think about five minutes. They managed five minutes, they all left. They didn't want to be there. <laughs> anyway, we went through the show and all that. You know, I think Phil was sitting down through the whole of the show. He's got all his computers and stuff like that. He looked like he was driving a lorry rather than playing, playing the guitar. And, and so it's really weird. So when I moved, you know, I mean, it, it, all that stuff had been practiced, all the cameras at the right angle, da, 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 didn't sing a tune, didn't do a bass solo, da, 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 no bass solo, oh, fuck this, I'm going to move. And so I looked after Pip, he looked at me when I went behind him, he thought I'd gone mad, he was trying to push me off, so I was leaning on him saying, saying I've got to sing down your mic now, 
my amp, my amp's broken. I'm still playing and listening to what's coming out. You know? <laughs> and uh, you can see it if you watch the show. And then I moved in on his mic, and that was down. Top in the world, this studio. It's fantastic. They copped it all. Two cameramen nearly bumped into each other. And you see that on film. You see two going towards it. What the fuck is going on? So there's all this information coming down to them because they've got headphones on. Say, no, he's saying he's moved in. We don't know why he's there. We don't know. Why <laughs> and the two go through real great, you know. Mm. Apart from Phil won't end his solo, or Pip didn't end his solo properly, and in the end it went, you know, diddle 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 the you know, in the end it did that, the ending. And he was getting really pissed off, you see it, you know, his, his solo goes a bit weaving. 